Hi guys, it's Stephanie. Um, I wanted to talk about something that was on my mind. Um, actually, I woke up the other day and um, I was here. I I don't know that I was hearing it, but I I in my mind was inhabitants of the earth or um, them that dwell on the earth was running through my mind. So um, usually that's one of the ways that the Lord will speak to me is early in the morning. Um, will just give me something to um, search out. So I went to the Word, of course, and um, we'll start with Revelation 3.10. It says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the, all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Now, one of the most important things about this is, this is in one of the letters to the churches, and it is so that it's directed towards the church so if it's saying a word like try them that dwell on the earth it's referring to a different group outside of the church so that's an important distinction there um and a clear distinction <laughs> that we need to recognize when we're reading the word of god is when there's when it's talking to a certain group and it's saying them it's not including you in the them you know so that's important and and it also speaks to a pre-tribulation rapture so um, we are not of this world scripture makes it clear that once we are believers in Jesus we are a new creation um, we are no longer part of the world in fact the world represents that which is not of God and um, 1st John 2 15 through 17 love not the world neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And what is the will of God? It's to love, it's to believe in Jesus, right? So, um, John seventeen sixteen. they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. This is Jesus in his prayer that he prays. Anyone who hasn't read that recently should go read John 17, where Jesus is praying a prayer. And he says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. He is not of this world. And we are as he is in this world, right? So... There's more scriptures to go with that, but I didn't write those down. So anyway, uh, <laughs> if ye were of the world, this is John 15, 19. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. So it's the same there. He's just saying you have been chosen out of the world. You are, you are not a part of the world anymore. Um, the world system, the, the the world that we live in is not our home any longer. Um, Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high, in high places. So, <laughs> I just wanted to point out, we there's a clear distinction between us and the world right so when we're reading the scripture we need to re recognize that when we're reading revelation 3 10 that he's talking to us therefore when he says them he's not including us in that he said not saying we that dwell upon the earth or you that dwell upon the earth he's saying them that dwell upon the earth so anyway there's that and then <laughs> we are aliens and sojourners it says in the word Philippians 3 20 through 21 for our conversation is in heaven for whence also we look for the Savior the Lord Jesus Christ who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself that's an amazing scripture <laughs> and just something very exciting to look forward to that our vile bodies will be changed, right? 
And then I read this one when I talked about Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 11, 13 through 16. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came, from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is and heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Wonderful. <laughs> inhabitors. I was looking at the word inhabitors. You know, it is it is like when, when you talk about, um, like when Jesus would, t or God told <laughs> them that they would have uh, the land of Israel, you know, and there was occupiers, people inhabiting that land. And he would say, go in and take those that inhabit the land or, or, you know, get them out of the land because they're inhabiting the place where we're supposed to be. I know I'm not saying this very well, but you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> At least most of you probably do. Isaiah 26, 21, for behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. When Jesus died on the cross, he covered our iniquity already. Um, those who believe in him have already been covered by his blood, right? So we don't, we are not grouped in the ones that will be punished as the inhabitants of the earth. So unsaved and continue to reject God. Also, these people that are described in Revelation are people who are unsaved and continue to re reject God. We got several passages where it tells us that they just won't receive Jesus no matter what <laughs> comes on the earth. They're going to they're going to blaspheme him, they're going to speak against him. And I, a couple of those verses are Revelation 14:6 and I saw another angel angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. And then, so they, they, they hear the message, but these are people that just refuse to believe it. Reve Revelation 9, 20 through 21. And the rest of the men, which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murderers, nor of their sorceries, nor of the fornications, nor of the thefts. That, so it just says they, they won't repent. They have no love of God in them. They are fully given to this world. Um, blaspheming God. Um, so they, they blaspheme God and there fell upon, so actually I forgot to write down the reference to this one, but it's also in Revelation. It says, and there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent and men blasphemed God because of the plague of hail for the plague thereof was exceeding great. So instead of re realizing that there's nothing they can do except except Jesus, they, they instead just shake their fist at him and say, how dare you do this to us, you know, kind of thing. And they, they refuse him. They blaspheme him. They, they do not receive. They do not believe. And then James 4, 4, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be friend of the world is the enemy of God. So, um, Let's look at Revelation 3.10 again. Keep thee from, or take thee out of, rather than through the hour of temptation. So, it doesn't say he will take us through it. It says he will t keep us from it. Keep us from the hour of temptation that, that will come upon those that dwell upon the earth, right? So, Another thing that I was thinking about is God will not judge the righteous with the wicked. Um, 2 Peter 2, 5 through 9. And spared not the old world 
Okay, so this reminds us, like, this part is talking about Noah and how he didn't spare the world because of all the iniquity that was in the world, but he did save out Noah. And so let me just read this passage and then we'll go over it. Two, Second Peter 2, 5 through 9. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah and the, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemning them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment and to be punished. It says everything right there that he will deliver the godly. And why are we godly? We're not godly because there's there's something so amazing about us. We're godly because we have received and believed in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. That is how we are godly. That's how we are righteous. We are made righteous in him. Psalms 145, 20. The Lord preserveth all, preserveth all of them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. Psalms 37, 28. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. And then well, I talked in the past about how um, when Abraham, when God went to Abraham and told him he was going to have a son, then right after um, that passage in scripture, there's another passage where it talks about how God was going to, or Jesus was going to go and they were going to scout out the land of Sodom and Gomorrah and decide if it was going to, um, if anyone was going to repent to, to change the direction that things were going, where he was going to destroy the land. And so it says, um, Abraham said to, to God, to Jesus, who he was having a conversation with that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked and the righteous should be as the wicked that be far from thee shall not the judge of all the earth do right. So what he was saying is, this is when he went in the countdown and he was like, if there be 50, if there be, I don't know the numbers, but if there be 20, if there be 10, he went down to 10, but there were not even 10 in Sodom and Gomorrah to preserve it. But the Lord said, if there be 10, he went all the way down to 10 and the Lord said, if there be 10 righteous, I will not destroy the land. So, but since there were not 10 righteous, what he did do was take Lot and, him, and those that came with him out of the land, right? And we know that whole story. We know how um, they had to actually physically remove them from the land because they were just taking their time and trying to gather things and take everything with them and whatever they were doing, they weren't willing, quickly coming, but they were still his righteous chosen and righteous people not righteous in their own right, but righteous because of God. And um, they snatched them out. And still yet, one of them longed for and went back to what they had been taken out of. She, she just turned back around and longed for that land. So it did not end well for her either. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just uh, pointing out that it's not in God's character. He's not going to punish us, his beloved, with those of the world who have completely rejected him. And yes, there will be some that get saved in the tribulation because they will remember what they were told and they will hear the angels and they will hear the things and the, and the two witnesses. But those that have already made the choice and have chosen him and have believed in him, He's not going to punish us with them. Um, it, it says it clearly in scripture. I don't know why people can't seem to understand that. Like read the word and read it, you know, fully, you know. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Okay, so we are redeemed. Ephesians 1, 
6 through 7, which you should read all of Ephesians 1. It's really good. <laughs> to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. And then Colossians 1, 12 through 14. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us, translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. We have re been redeemed already. Um, he has already forgiven our sins. He's not going to punish our sins um, through the wrath that's to come on the earth. Uh, through God and through man and um, leave us here for that. He's just not. He will be on time. <laughs> That's what I know. He'll be right on time. <laughs> Romans 10, 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Salvation, I think, encompasses all of it. It encompasses the fact that we are healed by his stripes. It encompasses that we are um, redeemed by his blood, that our sins have been forgiven, and it encompasses that he will change our mortal bodies into uh, immortal, and we will be like him, and we will be with him in heaven. So, Romans three twenty four through 26, being justified freely by grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, we are freely justified by grace. Oh, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. It just, um, it doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. It's just through Christ Jesus, through the grace that he gives us, we are justified and we are redeemed to him. Um, and the rest of that is, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation, propitiation <laughs> through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus when people say they cannot see the pre-tribulation rapture in scripture, I don't know what they're reading because I see it throughout scripture. All of these verses talk about how he is just and he will not judge us with the, the unjust and the, those that are not his, that judgment does not come upon those he loves and that he will bring us out of it. And I'm not talking about tribulation in this earth. Of course, we have trouble. We're living on this world that is corrupted and and messed up. <laughs> not how he originally created it. So yes, there's going to be trouble. But that doesn't negate the fact that he made a promise and he said he was going to come. And um, we need to just look up and believe that. And that brings me to Titus 2, 13 through 14. Looking for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Appearing. It says appearing. Like when someone appears, it's like it's a temporary thing. Like he's not coming to dwell with us here. It doesn't say he's coming to be here on the earth. It says he will appear in the clouds to meet us, right? <laughs> So, who gave himself for us, did I tell you the scripture I heard about that? Yeah, Titus 2, 13 and 14, who gave himself as, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Peculiar people. Again, we are strangers and aliens in this world. We are sojourners. We do not belong here. We no longer are a part of this world. We are a new creation of God and we are we are his redeemed and he will change our vile bodies to be like his. We will no longer be corrupt of this world, but we will be made incorruptible. 
as he is, so shall we ever be. It's amazing when you think about it. It's as he is, so are we. And it's, and when we see him, we will, we will finally have that full transformation of who we are in him. And then Revelation 5, 9 through 10, this to me speaks volumes for the pre-tribulation rapture. I mean, it, it, how can anyone read this and not see that it is us? We, the people who are on this earth and those in the past who believed in Jesus were redeemed already. And that is who he died for, us, the people of this earth. And so if you say that they sing a new song and it's before the seals are even open because they're singing about him opening the seals, then it has to be before the tribulation starts because we are the ones he redeemed. He didn't do it for the angels. He didn't do it for the animals or anything else. He redeemed us. He redeemed us to be a part of his family. And so Revelations 5, 9 through 10. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. To me, that that's all you need to know. We are already in heaven before even any of the seals are open because this is before the seals have been broken. He's, we sing this new song to him praising him and worshiping him, knowing that he is just and who he is. And we are the redeemed. The redeemed of the Lord say so, right? We are the redeemed of the Lord. And he did that for the people of earth, the, the people he created to be a part of his kingdom. And he chose us out of this world. And the rest of that, I keep stopping before I finish Re uh, Revelation 5.10. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth, on the earth. So remember, when he, he's talking to the churches in the beginning books of Revelation, I've gone over that before. There were like a promise to each church, you know, and um, part of that was kings and priests sitting on thrones with scepters, you know, the, those things he talks about right here. And, and this is John witnessing this in heaven. And remember he was weeping because no one was worthy to open the seals, but then we bow down and worship him because we know that it's him that will open the seals and only he is worthy to do so. So they are not open yet. And people who keep saying the seals are already open and everything, they can't be open yet because we haven't gone to him and been with him and praised him in this way. Um, that to me is just flat out proof. <laughs> we are set apart from the world. Okay. Matthew 5, 13 through 16. Ye are salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of man. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. We are the light of the world. People take that out of context and make it about a country or it's about you as a person with Jesus. You know, we are the light of the world because he was the light of the world and we have him in us. And, um, we don't light the candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We are to be set apart in, in him, to be a light for this world. In this darkness, there is light, and that light comes from him who resides within us, because his Holy Spirit is in us. So these things this is all that the Lord led me to and uh, not all of it because there was a whole lot of scriptures and I could keep going on and on and on, but I don't think you would want to sit here and listen to me any longer. So I'm not going to go too much further, but I did have one more scripture. Ephesians 5, 8, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are ye light in the Lord. Let me try that again. Cause my tongue got tied. 
<laughs> Ephesians 5 8 for ye were sometimes darkness but now are ye light in the world walk as children of the light so I just realized that I did not have this microphone on the entire time so I really hope that I recorded this oh no okay well let's try that anyway so what I was going to say is We are going to be out of here before, before this, before the tribulation happens, we are going to be out of here. And those who have not believed in Jesus, you are a part of this world right now. And if you want to get out of this world and not be a part of this world, then you need to believe in Jesus and believe what he did for you and believe that um, he died on the cross for you. He was buried and rose again. And... Um, that, you know, he did all that through his grace, you know, and not by something that you do to earn it, but by his grace. And he saves you and redeems you to himself. I know I'm not saying these scriptures like perfectly. In fact, I'm just kind of paraphrasing, but the scriptures and all of the salvation messages in the description box below. Also, I will link a video that gives the full gospel message. If you are interested in believing in Jesus, you should be. It's like the best thing ever and it will change your life in a good way. Um, I hope that you will at least look into it if you have not. And um, I pray that everyone will be blessed. I hope this video turned out because I didn't have my microphone on. So we'll see what happens there. And I may have to re-record it. <laughs> so I pray you guys are blessed and that the Holy Spirit will just fill you to overflowing. And that you will just be totally and completely um, healed. If there is sickness in your body, I pray for healing and restoration. And that he strengthen your mortal bodies. And that he make you strong and, and able to do what he is calling you to do. And to help you to occupy until he comes. And help you to reach other people. And help me also. I'm praying these same things for me because, you know, I've been through it. <laughs> and I know you guys have too. So I pray that um, you just know you're not alone. And you know, all of us brothers and sisters who are sharing on YouTube, we're all a part of the same family and those who are watching part of the same family and it's beautiful and the Lord is using it. And I pray that, that you are encouraged with these words today and that um, the Lord will just use it to edify you. And I just will talk to you soon whenever I have something new. I, you know, I don't always do a lot of videos. I happen to have some stuff this past week, but I don't know. We'll see if the Lord gives me something else. I'll come back again. So I will talk to you later. Love ya. Bye.